The roast that I'm talking about is of Jennifer Stevenson, who has been our outgoing District 4 governor. And as those of you who were here last week remember, I presented a trial run of that speech and got a lot of wonderful feedback. The idea of a roast is to use satire and to some zingers creatively to focus on maybe somebody's idiosyncrasies and areas where maybe the rest of the world doesn't know about some of their habits and everybody laugh and have fun. The whole idea is to have fun. And this particular roast, I'm going to have to focus on three things. One is the setting. Second is my speech. And third is how it was not choreographed. And conclude with some suggestions for what happens when you're in a strange venue and strange things happen that aren't as organized and crisp as this room, 389 Glasgow Hall, that we've all come to love so much. The setting. This was at a Hotel Biltmore in Santa Clara. Big ballroom. I'm going to guess 150 people. Those of you who were there will correct me if I'm wrong. The timing of this was at the end of a long day of meetings, which started at 8 in the morning, training institutes, various speeches by notable people, including our international governor, who just happens to live over in Fremont, but has been traveling the world and told us about what he's learned about Toastmasters worldwide. There were institutes, there was, there was training for officers, luncheon speeches then came at noon with recognition of officers and their accomplishments for the entire year, with lots of awards being handed out. The old governor gave her outgoing speech. The new governor gave her incoming speech. The international president gave yet another speech. And so by the time it got to the roast, it was a long, long day. And we were all kind of tired. Now, the other point is the microphone. The, the person who was running the luncheon program, which essentially was going to go from noon to three, we were going to leave at three, had a lecture over here on this side. And he had the standard microphone that he could take out but was in a clip and worked off that to introduce the various people that were doing all their things. There were various round tables throughout the entire room. Each with eight people over here was our governor about where you are, Kate, and her husband next to her, and some of the dignitaries of Division of District 4 were all there. There was no microphone in the center of the room for a speaker like a roaster. There were six roasters, and there was a roast master named Mark Barsoul, who was the previous uh, district governor. He had sent us a bunch of emails prior to that but he never, we never had a meeting to discuss exactly how the six of us are going to do that. Only thing I knew was that I was number one in leading off. It was very helpful for me in giving my speech to do the rehearsing. I worked on it a lot more from Friday morning until this is the next very next day. On the way up, we talked in the car, and I fine-tuned it some more. Kept cutting, 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 because I only had three minutes max, and they said, you're going to have a hook to pull you off if literally a hook. <laughs> so as you, we looked in the room, over here in this far corner is a young man who had been doing a lot of the audiovisual stuff with a hook that literally hit the ceiling. <laughs> it was out of some kind of biblical Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor dream code. <laughs> and it, had, it was like a staff with a hook on it, like a shepherd's staff. And we knew that was what was going to pull us off the stage if we went over three minutes. Now it just so happened that we were way ahead of schedule. The, the whole uh, day had been so beautifully organized that there was actually plenty of time when it came to the roast, which is what everybody was looking forward to. Fun, laugh, go out on a big bang. I get up there to give my speech. There is no microphone. And I come walking from over here and look at the roast master kind of microphone. That everybody else was level lured except for the, the host. And he sort of shook his head. And I didn't quite know what to do except 
looked, maybe probably took two seconds to look for help, no help. There's the guy with the staff, there's the roast master, no help. So I realized, oh, I'm going to have to wing this without a microphone in this big room with all these people. So that threw me off a little bit, and I realized I'm going to really have to project, and we know how to do this. So I did that, and as I'm partway through my speech, I completely forgot a transition from point two to point three. And I froze for a few seconds. It felt like a few minutes. <laughs> and I decided, as we do in Toastmasters, just go on ahead and do it. And I, which I did, then I got to the really funny part of the speech, which was the husband's, the Distinguished Husband program, and that I polished up with even some more humor. So as I was rolling through that, I'm getting laughs, but without a microphone, it was hard to know how to long, for me at least, I wasn't experienced enough to know how long to wait for the laugh to end before to go to the next one. I didn't want to sit on top of a laugh. And yet, without a microphone, they're sort of laughing up here, and then the laughter sort of trickles back there. And it's a totally different experience without a microphone. Then I see the cards flipping like I'm starting to see now, red. <laughs> and I knew that I had to finish this, but I had my stuff. Things were rolling. I was the whole, everybody was laughing. The roastee was laughing. Her husband was even laughing. And I thought, I don't want to end this. So I kind of put my hand up when the guy with the staff came <laughs> toward me and finished one more and then got off the stage. What could have been done differently? Uh, the roast master should have gotten us six guys together and uh, organized this. He should have known, I'm evaluating him. Yes, I am evaluating you, Mike. <laughs> and he should have <clears throat> looked at the time and realized that we were 15 minutes ahead. And if somebody's on a roll, don't cut him off. The whole point is to send the people home with a laugh. Mm -hmm. And I frankly was, that's what I want Carl to say if he agrees with me, because he was there. I think I was really on a roll and hated to be cut off. Mm -hmm. I looked at the several people later and frankly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so <laughs> my conclusion is, what do I need to do better? I need to insist that the Grossmaster meet with all of us and coordinate and choreograph what we're going to do and insist that I have a microphone and it's now time for me to go off the stage <laughs> my time is up. Thank you.